income tax. Thank you, Chair. I beg to move that the clauses as read out be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. Honorable Speaker, these are some of the clauses that I indicated uh, when the Speaker was still on the chair that part of the changes that would have come with this finance bill, part of the positive things that came with this finance bill, which unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, as the country engaged both here, at least not here, here because we were pointed out, but as the country engaged even on the expenses and elsewhere in other public fora, these are some of the positives that nobody ever spoke about. Honorable Speaker, with the deletion of these clauses on the Income Tax Act, I have indicated, Honorable Speaker, that we intended to give exemption to mamambogas, subsistence farmers, small-scale traders, anyone who is required to file their returns using ETIMS, Honorable Speaker, they were going to be exempted. And especially for our farmers and micro-enterprises, Honorable Speaker, whose gross income is below a million shillings, they would not need have, uh, they never needed or would not have been required to file their returns through ETIMS. But Honorable, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from Honorable Kawanjiko who is conversing in Kikuyu behind me. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Kawanjiko, for instance, Shiko from Ruaka, who is a small-scale trader, would not have required to have an ETIMS to file her returns if her gross income is below a million shillings. All that is lost, Honorable Speaker, now with the deletion of all these clauses. Honorable Speaker, we were going to introduce minimum top-up tax to multinationals, not for Kenyan companies, Honorable Speaker, but for multinationals to be able to top up their taxes if they are paying in other jurisdictions a tax rate that is lower than that which is being paid for here. For instance, Honorable Speaker, if there's a multinational operating in Kenya and uh, through profit transfers they are paying, say, 15% in another country and here the corporate tax rate is at 30%, to top up that 15%. And that would have meant that those multinationals would have paid more taxes to us and generated more revenue. That, again, Honorable Speaker, is lost. More important, Honorable Speaker, for me, many Kenyans, especially many business people, came to us and said that they are owed hundreds of billions by our county governments and even by government ministries. While they are owed by government, both at the county and national level, the same government is demanding taxes from them and they are being penalized for taxes that they have not paid. And they were getting a tax, uh, a tax amnesty for a further period of nine months as the pending bills committee co uh, completes its work and money is processed for them to get paid so that they pay their taxes without paying penalties. And this would also have increased uh, our revenues by close to another 30 to 40 billion shillings, besides being a relief to many of our business people. Unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, many of these business people now will have to contend with dealing with KRA because that tax amnesty came to an end on the 30th of June this year, and therefore they will not be able to enjoy that tax amnesty that was extended to them in the Finance Bill of 2023, and which we sought to extend to this, uh, this year to next year around March by a further nine months. Last year, Honorable Speaker, our post-retirement medical schemes, Honorable Speaker, are also going to enjoy a saving by increasing, or rather, Honorable Speaker, we are to support savings by uh, uh, people who are saving in post-retirement medical schemes. Again, in an endeavor to encourage Kenyans to save. Honorable Speaker, today, Many of us here, Honorable Speaker, the perfect example would be members of parliament, senior public servants who enjoy, and other people in the corporate world, 
who enjoy very lucrative or very rewarding or very good medical cover schemes when they're in employment. But upon retirement, they have no medical cover and end up suffering in the institution because of uh, medical bills. And Honorable Speaker, we are giving people a limit, increasing the limit from 10,000 to 15,000 or post-retirement schemes if you save up to 15,000 shillings per month. That is about 180,000 shillings. In a post-retirement medical scheme, you are going to enjoy tax rebates. You will not have to pay up to 15,000 per month or up to a total of 180,000 shillings a year on any saving amount you saved in a post-retirement medical scheme. That, again, Honorable Speaker, is all lost under the Income Tax Act. But with that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that we delete all those clauses it's unfortunate because when Kenyans said reject, we rejected everything good and bad. I just took liberty to point out the good that we rejected, and it is now rejected, dead, and buried. And I beg to move. Honorable members, I now propose the question that closes one, one to two that close 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12,